In this video from Learn Electrics, we will take a look at MCBs and show you very simply how they work. And we will discover how the different types relate to the time and current charts in the wiring regulations book. To start with, MCB is shorthand for miniature circuit breaker. It's a protective device that has replaced fuses in many industrial and domestic applications. There are five types of MCB available, B, C, D, K and Z. And this video is about the common types B, C and D. There are two modes of operation with an MCB, two ways in which they work. A steady state, small overload of a few amps will cause the MCB to trip after a period of time. For example, by plugging two 3 kilowatt heaters into a 20 amp circuit. This is 2 times 13 amps or 26 amps demand on a 20 amp breaker. The second mode is a massive overcurrent of tens or hundreds of amps that causes an instant response. For example, a short circuit between the phase and neutral wires or a significant fault to earth. The inside parts of an MCB look complicated, but for this video we will simplify things. The main parts that we will look at are a bimetallic strip and a solenoid coil. And together they give us the two modes of operation. And they are attached to a trigger mechanism that will turn the MCB off when activated. Let's start by looking at the bimetallic strip that responds to small overcurrents of long duration. This strip or bar is quite simply two different metals that are physically bonded together. When they are manufactured, the touching surfaces are chemically locked together as one piece of metal. Two common metals for this are steel and brass. Brass has a much higher temperature coefficient of expansion than steel, which means that it will expand more for the same temperature change. A temperature increase will cause both metals to expand, but the brass will expand more than the steel. Because they are bonded together, they cannot move apart or slide over one another. The only thing that they can do is to distort and bend, and this bending will always be towards the steel part. The excess current causes heat to build up in the bimetallic strip, and this heat causes a mechanical change and movement in the strip. It is this mechanical movement that operates the trigger mechanism inside the MCB. As an everyday example, a kettle has a bimetallic strip. As the water boils, the strip distorts with the hot water and trips the kettle switch into the off position. Next, we can look at the second mode of operation, the solenoid coil that responds to large and instantaneous overcurrents. A small, slowly changing current will have little or no effect on a coil. It will flow through the coil just as it would through any other piece of wire. Shown here, there is a 1 amp of change over 4 minutes. It is not enough to trigger the solenoid. Nothing happens. But a high instantaneous current change will have a dramatic effect. The pin will be fired out of the MCB. Rapidly changing currents will cause an electromagnetic effect, a magnetic flow that will cause the pin to move very rapidly with the flow and strike the trigger. We can look at a very, very simplified view of the inside of an MCB. In this simplified and stripped back view, we just have the parts that will explain the basic operation. The line or phase voltage comes in at the bottom, picked up from the consumer unit bus bar. And line or phase goes out at the top to the circuit wiring in the property. In normal operation, with the switch in the on position, the contacts are closed, making a continuous path and allowing current to flow through the MCB. The trigger mechanism is in a reset and balanced state. We have an overload coil or solenoid along with its plunger for rapidly changing currents. And we have the bimetallic strip or bar for the small and long duration overload currents. This simple drawing shows the MCB in the on position, the rest position, with the contacts closed. Current can flow through the device. In this drawing, the trigger mechanism has been activated. The switch is in the off position and the contacts have opened. Current flow through the MCB has been stopped 
and the circuit has been put into a state of safety, awaiting investigation and repair. We can draw all these component parts in one straight line and this does make it a lot easier to visualise. Starting on the left, we have the line in, voltage or current enters the device from the bus bar. Current then flows through the bimetallic strip and then through the solenoid coil. From the solenoid, the current flows through the closed contacts and to the line out terminal from where it then travels along the circuit wires to the attached appliances, the sockets or whatever. If all the currents are within normal parameters, nothing happens and current continues to flow. Any problem that causes the bimetallic strip or solenoid core to operate the trigger will open the contacts and stop the flow of current. The circuit will be dead. On the left is the MCB in its normal on position with current flowing through it. On the right is a tripped MCB, the contacts are open and no current is flowing. How these MCBs are affected by different sized currents is explained in a set of charts, the time and current tables, and each device will have a set of tables that it must conform to. The table we shall use in this video will be found on page 370 of the Wiring Regulations 18th edition. Many people think that this table is complicated to understand, but it's not. With a little explanation, it is easily understood and this knowledge can actually help you in your work. This is a typical time and current curve for an MCB, a nice smooth curve for the most part. But they also have what is called a knee, a point at which they will trigger almost instantly, which can be as quick as 0.1 seconds or less. The three types of MCB that we are considering in this video are Type B, Type C and Type D. The curves are all of a similar shape, but the time and current parameters are slightly different for each. Type B devices are the most sensitive and should be installed by preference in domestic situations. Type D devices are the least sensitive of the three and are usually reserved for certain industrial applications. More on this in a later video. We can label the axes now. Standard convention puts the time in seconds up the left hand side and the current in amps along the bottom from left to right. So where does the knee fit in? The knee divides the chart into two halves. The upper half is the thermal response part, telling you what happens to the bimetallic strip. The lower half below the knee is the magnetic response of the solenoid, which is pretty much instant. Looking at a simple drawing of the thermal trip part, we've used a 10 amp type B MCB as an example. This can be followed on page 370 of the wiring regs book if you wish. 20 amps flows through this 10 amp MCB. It's a small overload of long duration and begins to heat up the bimetallic strip. In our example, after 180 seconds, the bimetallic strip has distorted sufficiently to operate the trigger mechanism and the MCB will turn off. 180 seconds is 3 minutes, a long, slow response time, but this is what happens. The customer will perhaps have plugged in an extra room heater and after a few minutes the MCB has tripped. There's nothing wrong with the circuit or wiring, the customer has simply overloaded the circuit. Using the same MCB, but this time there is a short between the phase and neutral and a massive current flows. This rapid and significant current will cause the solenoid to operate and fire the pin into the tripping mechanism. In just fractions of a second, the power is off and the circuit is de-energised. The actual tables use logarithmic scales. The number groups go up in value to the power of 10. If it wasn't done this way, the numbers would never fit on the page or you would need a very big page. Look at the blue box. This is the numbers 1 to 10. Each horizontal line here represents an increase of just one second. 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. The green box shows the seconds in groups of thousands. 1000 seconds, 2000 seconds, etc. Or look at the tens. 10, 20, 30, 40 and so on. And the same rule applies to the currents on the bottom of the graph, logarithmic scales. 
So how do we use this graph? We can show you best with an example. A 20 amp type B MCB has a current of 30 amps flowing through it. How long will it be before it trips? And the answer might surprise you. First, find the response curve for a 20 amp breaker along the top. Now, find the vertical line for 30 amps along the bottom. Follow this 30 amp line upwards until it crosses the curved line for a 20 amp breaker. Where the two lines meet, there is your answer. Trace this crossing point to the left and read off the number of seconds it takes to trip. In this case, it is 2000 seconds, just over 30 minutes. Just to recap, a 20 amp circuit breaker or MCB is designed to carry 20 amps of current 24 hours a day, seven days a week. A small overload will cause the device to trip, but this may be in a few seconds or in many minutes. This effect is a thermal trip using a bimetallic strip. But a large overcurrent will cause the MCB to operate very quickly, usually in less than 0.4 seconds with modern devices. This is an electromagnetic response and uses a solenoid and plunger. Please do make yourself familiar with the time and current tables. They really can be your friend. And there we have it. That rounds up this video. We hope that you found it useful and that you've put a little more knowledge into your mental toolbox. Thank you for watching this video. It is very much appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. Here are some tips on getting even more information and help out of learnelectrics.com. At your web browser, enter learnelectrics.com into the search bar. Select learnelectrics.com from the choices offered and the website, as shown, will open up for you. You now have a couple of choices. You can search for a help item or any video by entering a keyword into the search bar on the right. Click on return and all the help files and videos with that word in the title will be listed for you. They will be shown with a short description and each video listed will have a link shown that will take you directly to that exact YouTube video. Or you can browse through a list of all the available items and videos. To do this, click on the LE logo on the top left of the home page and all of our items and videos will be shown. There will be 10 items shown on each page and at the bottom of each page is a page selector. Page 2, 3, 4 and so on that will bring up the next 10 items or videos in the list. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics or one word into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel. Don't miss the next one. Once again, thanks for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.